What is going on people of YouTube? My name is Curtio and welcome to Game Week 9 Review. We're almost in double figures. Tomorrow there'll be a preview all in double figures. Game Week 10 is approaching. We're, well, we're a quarter of the way through the season and hopefully things are all going well for you. Two quick things to mention. One, George Connolly, um, you sent um, a few comments in recently. I can't reply to any of them um, because YouTube won't let me to reply for some reason. I have liked them um, and I have tried to at you in the last one but it still didn't work so I don't know what's happening there but I did reply to your most recent comment on my um, welcome to my channel video and secondly if you want to have a chance at winning up to £50 and there's a link in the description to my predict series form where you can fill out what you think the scores will be for the next game week's fixtures and the Sheffield Wednesday result they matter and you could be in the chance of winning up to £50 it could get even more as the season goes on when certain things are added in also in my late in my video predicts coming later on this week I'll tell you about a few changes to the system of scoring points and how we all did there but we're here to talk about the review of this week now first of all there's some big scorers as you can see on here with the round score. But we're going to start off with goalkeepers. Um, well, we haven't got only got, we've got two there, but we need three because we've got um, another goalkeeper in there. First of all, Boaz Myhill. Um, what game he had, you know, you know, well, <laughs> say that. Clean sheet against Sunderland isn't that good. But he picked himself up two bonus points of a clean sheet, 90 minutes played. Not much to say except for, well done, my friend. You picked yourself eight up points and also 10% of people did. He, I, I am, it is tempting to bring him in. I would say bring him in, but... Um, the big question is with West Brom is um, they've got a keeper called Ben Foster and um, when is he back? We don't know. Whenever he does come back, will he get first team? I think he'll go straight into the first team. So it's about getting him in and as soon as um, Foster's back, get him out again. Or make sure you've got a second keeper like I've got basically. Get checking, maybe bring him in from like, your backup goalkeeper because it's not worth risking having no goalkeeper and only having 10 men on. Now he was the first goalkeeper that did well. Oops, that's a dream team. There we go. Secondly, we have Hugo Lloris, another keeper on eight points. He grabbed up a bonus point, which is great for him. Four clean sheet or four for a clean sheet, and also made three saves in the game against Liverpool. The boring nil-nil draw, I suppose you call it. But both keepers had a good game. And as a matter of fact, we are going on to Simon Mignolet as our third player. He also grabbed um, no bonus points in this game, surprisingly, but he got four for a clean sheet and also made four saves, and that's the reason why he's in there and why um, we have other keepers here, which is basically versus De Gea. That's why he's in there, because he made one more save than De Gea, and I felt like that was fairer off. Moving on to the defenders now. Now we've got some big scorers in here. First of all, we've got 11 points for Chris Smalling, who had a fantastic game, conceding no goals away at Everton. Goodison is known as quite a fortress and hard place for United to go to. But, um, you know, in recent times, however, Smalling and co. helped with that. And Smalling is developing into what we could have as one of the, well, the, the next best thing since John Terry was at his prime. Because when John Terry was at his prime, he was one of the world's best defenders, one of the world's best centre-backs. Chris Smalling, although he had a rough start to his United career, is really, really looking good now. And it's really exciting with the Euros coming up. I think he'll be the starting centre-back. I can't see past Smalling. It'll be Smalling and someone else. Maybe Stones. Maybe he's not got enough experience. Maybe Cahill. Maybe Jagielka. Someone like that. I don't know. But I know if I, if I was picking the teams, if he carried on this form throughout the whole of the season, Smalling would be my England team. He got two bonus points, four for a clean sheet, and three for an assist. And for a centre-back... That's quite strange. However, saying that, if we go down here a bit, Marcus Rojo almost got, also got an assist. So, quite a strange game, you know. Quite a strange game. But secondly, we have someone who is really tempting to bring in, is um, Hector Bellerin. Now, he didn't start off the season. People started bringing him out, but then all of a sudden, he's picked up fantastic form. And the difference is, he goes forward. I think that's where I've made the mistake with Koscielny. I've gone with someone that is more centralised, and he can go forward fantastically. Um, he's also picked up 10 points this week. One bonus point, four for a clean sheet, three for an assist. Just one bonus point less than Smalling. If not, he'd be on 11 points with him. But fantastic game, nevertheless. Away at what, um, Watford, where the only goal they've conceded has been a penalty. So, not bad performance from him. And lastly, let's choose between Van Dijk, Rose and Skirtle. And I chose Van Dijk for the simple reason I love goal-scoring defenders. I think if you get a goal-scoring defender in, that's good. And I think they might have it in Virgil van Dijk. He's played five games, but he scored two goals. Um, he, have, he has conceded in four of the five games, but he's a goal scorer. So that's why, although he's only kept one clean sheet, you know, he's picked up 28 points from his first five, which is not too dandy indeed. Two bonus points, 90 minutes played, one goal scored and one, two goals conceded, which equals mi minus one um, point, which is also why I put him in there, because the minus one sort of made him put him onto 10. We look at Danny Rose, 
and uh, you know, Skirtle, just a boring clean sheet. Three bonus points for them. You know, admittedly, great defensive performance, but I have a thing for goal-scoring defenders. Now we have the midfielders, and um, first of all, you know, <laughs> it, it's no surprise that um, Giorgio um, Wijnaldum makes it his way into the team with a massive four goals scored. Where did that come from? Where did Newcastle's performance come from? Uh, it, it they scored six goals in eight games up until that point, and they scored six, you know, inside 90 minutes against Norwich. They scored with every single shot on target they had. If they had a shot on target, it went into the back of the net. Is it clinical? Was it a poor day at the office for Norwich? I think a bit of both, but the finishing was top quality, and his performance was top quality. Whether you bring him in or not, I know there'll be a lot of people bringing him in. A lot of knee-jerk decision ones, but, you know, he's proved it before. He's got six goals and one assist, considering Newcastle have only scored, you know, up until that point, like I say. You're looking at it, it's six goals. And they've scored 12 now, or maybe four of them were in the same game. But they've scored 12 goals, he's contributed to seven of them. Key player. Uh, one other person who played well who won't feature in this video was Mitrovic. Fantastic performance from him. I was really impressed with his work rate, his determination, and his goal-scoring ability, and also his volley and his finish was fantastic. Secondly, we have rather one I didn't see coming. Admittedly, was Raheem Sterling. He grabbed himself a hat trick as well. Two hat tricks um, in full midfielders as well. Strange um, scenes here. Um, but he did well. He grabbed himself three goals as well. He got two bonus points. Two bonus points seems a bit weird for a person that got a hat trick. Um, but Boney did grab the three bonus points for that game. He got two though. He only played 77 minutes, but he still got two for playing that. And also the 15 for scoring three goals. Great performance from Raheem. Great signing also for the future. May cost a lot. It helps the English quota and also definitely one for the future. Can he perform at the top level? As long as he doesn't get tired after one or two games, what he does currently, definitely got the potential to go there. And lastly, I was simply to bring in other players because Lanzini had a good game. I was simply to bring in Sissoko because he had a fantastic game. But, you know, the points don't lie. And I think it had to be Herrera, even if he was on 13, maybe even 12, for the simple fact he's outshone the possible new Ronaldo, new Messi, whatever you want to call him, Memphis Depay. Now, for the Everton game, Depay was dropped, and basically in place of him, Herrera came in, and he shone. He was absolutely fantastic. Um, he, oh, he was, you know, running the ball, he was running with the ball, he was confident on the ball, you know. You know, he looked at him and he thought, he's a player that has got the built-in quality that Manchester United need. Although it's not the pace, and they had Marshall on one of the wings, who tracked back fantastically as well, Herrera definitely has the skill. He grabbed three bonus points, one for the clean sheet, which is rare, <laughs> for a player that makes it into the top. Also got an assist and a goal, and played um, for the two points as well. So, 14 points under Herrera, fantastic performance, really impressive, really good player. I think any Premier League side would happily to have him in their squad. And lastly, we move on to the attackers. Now, um, of course, we start off with um, with Wilfred Boney. He had a fantastic week this week, grabbing himself two goals and one assist as well. Let's not forget about that. With three bonus points, as I said, I think that's the reason he got three bonus points because he contributed scoring and also assisting wise. Maybe he could have even got more. We don't know. If the finishing was more clinical, you know, City could have had. You know, I dread to think how many. You know, I dread to think. And if Aguero was playing, oh goodness, <laughs> he would have had eight. Loading on at 20 nil. Don't know. You never know. Fantastic performance from the beast, though. He grabbed himself, like I say, three bonus points. Three for the assist, two for playing in 90 minutes, and also eight for scoring twice. Well done to him. Secondly, we go on to a man that just cannot stop scoring. Jamie Vardy. Now, in the last... Oh, hold on a minute. In the last six games, he scored eight goals. And um, in all of his um, games this season, nine goals, nine games, and one assist. Something about him is just really, really performing. Now, people are saying, you know, you won't get into the World Cup squad if he performs like this for the whole season. That is exactly what Harry Kane did for half a season, what he started doing. Why he doesn't deserve to be in a spot there, I don't know. If we've got all the attackers fit, uh, I think, you know, I don't think Welbeck will be playing in the World Cup. Because if you've got Sturridge fit, Sturridge will be taken anyway. Rooney's definitely taken. I think Harry Kane is definitely taken. And then Jamie Vardy will take up the fourth striker spot. For the simple fact, if he carries on like this for the whole season, he's going to have 30-odd goals. Now, I know he'll have to drop off at some point like Ryad Mahrez has, maybe. But he's definitely one to consider. I think definitely one, you know, like Smalling, that maybe, you know, at the moment, although I didn't put him into the squad on the podcast with Jano, has to go to the World Cup. And lastly, we have someone who... 
I did tip. I did tip Diogo Costa, or was it Barney? One of them. I did tip to do well. Costa's come in, grabbed himself an assist for the own goal. Um, grabbed himself a goal. Played 90 minutes and got three bonus points. Fantastic performance from the aging, you know, 23 year old, however old he is. Uh, looks about 80. Um, played a fantastic game. Came back from his suspension. Did well. Their next fixtures. Looking at it. West Ham away. Liverpool at home. Stoke away. Can he get back into form? Can he be the Diego Costa of last season, which was destructive? We'll have to wait and see. But lastly, we've got to look at the players who didn't perform very well. Now, if I just get this up on my phone. Um, first of all, where else to start? Where else to start, Mr. Ruddy? Poor goalkeeping. Um, didn't save a single shot in the game, obviously, because they scored of all six. And also got um, minus three goals conceded. Shocking game from him. Shocking game from Newcastle, from Newcastle, from Norwich in general. And definitely not a game he'll remember with any satisfaction indeed. Secondly, we've got a Palace goalkeeper. Now, I think this is harsh um, quite a lot. But I've chucked Wayne Hennessy in there. Because I was struggling for goalkeepers to put in there. He did, score, he did concede three goals, minus one points. And you look at the amount of saves. He made just one save in the whole game. You know, maybe it was poor. You know, Midlay did go down to 10 men, so it was the uh, odds were always against them. But um, I still think it was a poor performance from him in general. Hopefully, the return of McCarthy, because I really need McCarthy to start playing so I can have a choice in goal. That's the reason why he was in there. And lastly, I think this is harsh as well, because he did get two points. But um, Federici. Federici. I always call him Federici when his name is Federici. Adam Federici made six saves, so he got the two points up. Also, two points for playing, but conceded five goals. Did make a few mistakes during the game. Gave Boney the second goal. So that's why I think he made it into here. Even though there were keepers on one point, he made it in there because without the saves... He would have been down there. Um, if it was um, points taken off from, um, for mistakes, he would have, or leading up to goals, he would have easily been on zero points if it was minus two. But next up, we have the defenders. And, well, <laughs> I've got to start with, oh my goodness, Villa fans must hate him, Adlan Hutton. He can't do anything right. Um, although, he did have a decent game against Liverpool. You look at him, grabbed himself an assist. That doesn't happen often. Um, but he did score an own goal against Chelsea. Also, Two goals or more because he's got minus one points. We left him on a meagre minus one points for the uh, for the game. and leave him on nine points for the season. Not good for someone that is considered maybe a first team right back now. Who knows? Next up, we do have a player that I tipped this week to do really well. Same as Ruddy, um, which is um, unfortunately I, I was gonna I didn't know who to bring in, so I thought I'd rather bring in someone I got wrong, which was um, Russell Martin. Again, you can bring in any Norwich defender, barring Olsen, because he got the two assists, but... Shocking. Just shocking. Some of the defending was, you know, some of it wasn't their fault. Some of it was. And uh, that, unfortunately, has to fall down on Russell Martin for me, because I did tip him for success. Any other Norwich defenders, really, could have been put in there. And lastly, um, we have someone by the name, and this is a surprise one, probably, to anyone, but Seamus Coleman. He came in for the first time since the Chelsea win, um, surprisingly, and grabbed himself zero points for conceding um, three goals minus one, also getting a yellow card. So not a best game for him. The reason I put him in there is because people have selected him. He's got 10% selected, got zero points, let maybe quite a few people down. And now we move on to the midfielders once I swipe across. First of all, surprisingly, I'll leave that until last, actually. You can see it on the side of the screen. We're going to start off with Aston Villa player again. I know, I know. We've got Jack Grealish in here. Now, he picked up a yellow card in the defeat. Uh, wasn't very inspiring. Didn't really do much for Aston Villa. And that's why he's made it in there. No, nothing really else to say about that. I was, I did have James um, McLean in here for the simple fact you don't act like that on the football pitch. Fans are wrong. But constantly, you know, swearing at him, giving him jip. Of course, you're going to give jip to the fans. It's got to be banterous. At the end, you've got to be banterous. Not nasty, which is what it was. Um, but luckily I listened to the game on radio Steve Claridge having an absolute meltdown over Swansea's horrific passing and that unfortunately falls on the head of Mr. John Joe Shelby who also picked up a yellow card has a, a decent 3% not very good um, but he has one point from the game week not very good from him and as Steve Claridge said if anyone else watched um, or listened to Steve Claridge it was absolutely hilarious Oh, I heard all sorts of insults, uh, horrendous, diabolical, shocking. He was having a right there. But we do have a little Newcastle um, midfielder, and that unfortunately is Czech Tiote. Now, 
Chick Ciotte <laughs> is such a, a, you know, a funny character, but also someone that can't be trusted. Play 45 minutes, have a yellow card, you know, looks like if he was played after half time, was going to get himself sent off. Quite frankly, had an awful game, and he had to be put in there because he played 45 minutes, had to be taken off because, you know, Steve McLaren is not a dumb man. He can see, you know, that Teote was close to getting himself sent off. He can't be trusted. He'll lunge him in too many tackles, he'll get red cards. You know, as proven, I'm assuming, by his history. I knew, I knew what? Maybe not. I could have sworn he had more than one, but a lot of yellow cards nevertheless, and he can't be trusted. Either way, if I've just made myself look like a mug. But anyway, moving on to the attackers quickly, I'll just run through these. Deeney didn't score again, very poor. And then we've got Lukaku from Everton, again, didn't score, didn't really do much. Also picked up a yellow card, so poor from Romelu. And also we've got Graziana Pella, who didn't really do that bad in the game. But, you know, considering he'd been involved in 10 of the 13 goals, didn't do anything really. He has less defence that could have conceded more than they did. Uh, so unfortunate to say, but he made it into there. But thank you guys for watching, nevertheless. If you haven't joined this video, then leave a like. And we think in the comments down below. And subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy. Hopefully you all enjoy the series. Remember to vote on your predicted scores via the link in the description. It'll say um, something like that. And then a Google Docs form where you just fill it in. And you'll be entered. Or hopefully if you beat me and Joe. Entered in the chance to win at least £50 maybe. If you're lucky. But thank you guys for watching. Nevertheless. And peace.